there, I'm Sally Piri. I'm here on the Indonesian resort island of Bali. It's a beautiful weather today and I'm here with the co-founder and group CEO of Grab, Anthony Tan. How are you sir? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you here and thank you for joining me in this program. We both will talk about your company and also Indonesia's G20 presidency. But before that, Anthony will show me uh, a service provided by Grab and it's about electric vehicles. Okay, stay tuned on unlocking. All right. Yeah, we? Yeah? Okay. What a privilege this is! The co-founder of um, Grab will show me directly. Yes. So Anthony, um, why does Grab choose electric vehicles? I think the most important force we can work together on is to really drive uh, for technological innovation. And one of the benefits of technological innovation is we can make real impact. And what type of impact do we want to uh, make is we see in this world today, there's a lot of climate change issues. And we know that you know, today Grab has done our part by making sure all our offices are renewable, but that's not enough. Majority of our emissions still comes from vehicles and we have millions and millions of vehicles right? that we, we help uh, empower with, with all the drivers. Right. So if we can more and more electrify the fleet, mm -hmm. we can actually make an impact using technology Correct. to really remove carbon emissions. So today, for example, we are the largest EV ride-hailing fleet in, in Indonesia, mm -hmm. 8,500. Right. Uh, and thanks to the support of all the customers and the governments, mm -hmm. we've been able to do over 100 million kilometers uh, in EV in our EV vehicles, saving over 10,000 tons of carbon emissions. That's a real impact. Right, right. How many EV does Grab operate in in Bali or in Indonesia? In Indonesia, about 8,500. Wow. Okay, okay. How about the availability of EV charging stations? You know, mm -hmm. it is true that there is insufficient today. Uh -huh. I, uh -huh. Just now I was talking to the two Ibu uh -huh. who are using uh, Grab bike and all the electric uh, uh -huh. listric and they were saying that, look, I, I wish that we can have more swapping stations. Uh -huh. That's a real problem. Right. So we all need to come together. We're still in the beginning, early parts of the evolution of the listric EV industry. We need to come together, build more charging stations, more fast charging, more swapping stations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that we can make two-wheel EV and four-wheel EV a, a reality, a common sight. Today, you don't see it as a common sight. I mean, you're hearing even the, the motor engine outside, right? Imagine if it's EV, it's so quiet. I mean, like, to, like you can't even hear, you can hear inside the car, it's so quiet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Imagine that, where it becomes a norm. But we need to work together to make charging stations, swapping stations, EV, a norm. Right, okay. By the way, you are here for the B20 summits, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Okay, you're going to be one of the speakers. Yes, yeah? very, very honored to speak. Wow, okay, okay, awesome. Anthony, Elon Musk and Tony Blair will be among the speakers during the B20 summit. So what is your expectation from the meeting? Yeah. For us, it's about 
how does this meeting drive to real collaboration, mm -hmm. great next steps that will go into solving real problems. And I really have to thank President Jokowi, the government of Indonesia, for being such a gracious host. Mm -hmm. Only by hosting this here, first time in, I, I, I believe, in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. we're all so proud as Southeast Asians that it's hosted right here to create a dialogue, to create a bridge of, of leaders, of global leaders, sometimes on two ends of the spectrum, meeting and talking and being like old friends, mm -hmm. not, not using virtual meetings, mm -hmm. but using traditional, good old fashioned, hello, seeing each other <laughs> and just chatting about real problems, mm -hmm. not about my agenda, your agenda, but solving real societal problems. Mm -hmm. That's how, this is the only way we can solve, you know, the EV coal start problem, right? Because it needs the collaboration between businesses, between governments, between, uh, between state-owned enterprises, with private, other private corporation partners. Mm -hmm. Only by collaborating and by real dialogue mm -hmm. of being clear with the problems, mm -hmm and saying, this is what I can contribute, this is what you can contribute, then we can begin to really solve real societal problems. Right, okay. Okay, thank you. Well done. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much. All right, and I think we are here already and yes, we, we will continue our discussion inside. Let's All do right. it. All right. Drive. Thank you. No, it was fun. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's continue our discussion. Sure. Mm. Could you share with us mm. some of the highlights mm. in your journey to start your business from a ride hailing company to a super app mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Yeah. The highlights um, that are most memorable. Mm -hmm. You know, I would never have imagined we would start a company that. Today, we either feed or, or, or help people pay or help people get to work. One in 20, right, across yeah. Southeast Asia, Correct. we're impacting. Uh, it's just something that we would never have imagined. That's yeah. the reality. Uh, recently, we celebrated over now 10 billion rides. Right. Um, all over Asia. All South across East Southeast Asia, Asia. Yeah. just recently. Right. Um, you know, this is just something, and we would never have thought that we could build a platform as it evolved from a ride hailing to providing food delivery, to providing payments, right. to providing uh, grocery delivery, to so many other services that we're providing, mm -hmm. and also empowering the millions of driver partners and merchant partners we serve, not just in Indonesia, but yeah. in what, 480 plus cities today. Right. So I think that's something, uh, you know, the team and, mm -hmm. and really has uh, done. And I'm really uh, proud for, of, for the team for doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, I think moving forward, uh, what will we be really proud about? I think we will be really proud if we continue to drive real social impact, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, you know, helping the environment with uh, fighting climate change right, in a positive way, mm -hmm. uh, creating much more inclusion and really through digitization, uh, using our tools and our technology to really help, literally that is our mission, to drive Southeast Asia forward mm -hmm. by creating economic empowerment for everyone right. using our technology. So really Moving forward, it's about doubling down on this mission uh -huh. and really helping and serving Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia. Right. How was it in the beginning? <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Right. I, I mean, I, I, could it, I mean, just start as you know, starting a business uh -huh. uh, or starting, you know, especially when you think about trying to start a double bottom line company, right? Because most people say, hey, you know, you Anthony, starting a company is tough enough. Correct. Why do you want to start a company and yet at the same time help society and create economic profit? And Correct. you know, just having to 
teach people or educate my team and educate people around me that it is possible to create a company that's double bottom line. In fact, today we are even moving further. We're saying let's create a triple bottom line company, and that's what we are driving towards. Okay, I'm going to ask more a little bit Please. about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. later. So Grab announced uh, this year that the company, like you said, from uh, transitioning from double bottom line yes. to triple bottom line. Yes. So can you elaborate about it yeah. more and why the shift now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, for us, it's always been how do we continuously build a company that's sustainable over the long run to serve this mission, right? Which is driving Southeast Asia forward by creating economic empowerment for everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, what we also saw, the realities of climate change. Uh, I remember the floods in Philippines. I remember it affects right. the livelihoods of many people, Not including... Not only in the Philippines, Exactly, but in Indonesia, in, in, uh, in beautiful Bali, right? Right, right? I mean, it's such a beautiful tourist spot. Mm -hmm. Climate change can affect all of us, right. all our industries. Correct. And what we saw was many of our drivers' livelihoods our driver partners, right. their livelihoods were badly affected when there's a flood. They cannot do their right. work. They cannot go out and deliver food. For us, it's very important that we think about how do you continuously work with partners to fight the negative impacts of climate change right. so that we can protect the livelihoods of our partners. Mm -hmm. right? That's why we said we have to transition from double bottom line to triple bottom line. Okay, in relation to that, I want to talk about environment, social and governance, EASG. And could you, could you share with us what are, you know, the broad priorities for Grab uh, in the areas of ESG? Yeah. I, for us, when we think about the broad principles, mm -hmm. going back to building long-term sustainable companies, mm -hmm. how do we create real social impact and the way to create real social impact we think about it in three broad goals mm. number one environment yeah. how do you be a positive change for environment number two inclusion right. how do you make sure that no one is left behind and number three diversity how do you provide more and more diverse whether it's in grab or outside of grab Right. And let me, maybe I kick off with climate change. Mm -hmm. So for us, when we think about the climate change problem, it's a real problem and I think we all must recognize it. But for us, we're already doing a number of things. Number one, we committed to our goal. By 2040, carbon net neutral. Grab will be carbon net neutral by 2040. But it's easy to just claim a goal. How do we do it? Are we role modeling? So first, all our corporate offices are already running on renewable. Number two, we said, where else are we emitting carbon emissions? Mm -hmm. We said, today, we're emitting carbon emissions with our fleet because we have a massive fleet, right? As, right. as I shared just now, we have one of the largest number of drivers in Southeast Asia. Right. So when that happens, we have to think about, okay, how do we electrify our fleet? So we've done it in a few ways. Number one is we think about, okay, how do we build towards a large EV fleet? Today we have about 8,500. I know it's still very early, but even with 8,500, we're already the largest EV ride hailing in Indonesia. Right. And because of that, and again, thanks to our partners, government partners, mm -hmm. and our consumers, mm -hmm. they really like choosing uh, Grab Electric. Mm -hmm. We've seen with that, we now, with our whole fleet, over one, what, actually over 100 million kilometers have been done via our electric fleet. Mm -hmm. Over 10,000 tons mm -hmm. of carbon emissions has been saved right. because it's been running on our electric fleet. So I think that is where we've come in. Now, early days, is there more to do? 100%. Uh, that's on climate change. Now, when I think about, say, inclusion, mm -hmm. one big component is 
what are the minorities that haven't been included, whether it's in our marketplace, whether it's in our business. Uh -huh. So interesting fact I learned, do you know that it's two times to six times more difficult for someone who is, uh, who is disabled to get a job? to earn a decent living Correct. compared to us right. like we we're you know life is already tough for us right. but can you imagine how tough it is for especially a person during disability? the pandemic especially during the pandemic yeah. so we really thought about how to create programs uh, to really help this group of people and that's why we created a goal by 2025 we'll have many thousands of people who have disabilities but use and leverage our technology to earn an income. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a, you know, uh, a story that I remember. Chahyo, which is uh, you know, one of our partners, he's a Grab kiosk partner. Uh, Where? And, uh, actually here in Indonesia. Oh, okay. And I remember you know, he shared this story where it basically went from, you know, he really had a hard time, especially during the pandemic, but through Grab kiosk, which is just an app on his phone. He could sell digital services. He could, he could sell, you know, help money, rem domestic money remittances. He mm -hmm. could sell Pulsar top up right. and he earned. So it increases income multiple by, by a huge amount. Wow. And now because of that, he could finance, you know, he could grow his, uh, his business. Right. He can even, he's even helping his son uh, in his goal to become a dentist. Wow. So, you know, wow. these are the stories that how do we help not just Chayo, mm -hmm. but how do you create thousands, if not millions of people who mm -hmm. have disability and help them come up the social ladder Correct. and help their families earn a much better living, uh, much better standard of living, much better rice bowl for their home. Right. right? Yeah. So that is number two. Number three, we really think about diversity. You know, I believe it's extremely important because, you know, I've personally felt it when there are sometimes in a room and when there's no woman leaders, we make some optimal decisions, I'll be honest. And I found that having woman leaders, it is so important. Mm -hmm. You make better decisions, your meetings, your thoughts, your thought partnership is much better. You, you aim to reach 40% exactly. female, female leaders. Exactly. Leadership, yeah? Today we're at about 34%. Oh, wow. Um, okay. We're not there yet. But if you see Indonesia, which is really role modeling, over 50% of our leaders in Indonesia are women. Oh, wow. Uh, so we want the rest of the, all the, all the other subsidiaries globally mm -hmm. to really learn from that. And how do we eventually reach from 34% to even 50-50 where leaders are all women? Mm -hmm. I think it's a journey. That's, the, that's within Grab. But as I think about even beyond Grab, I think about our partners. So, you know, one thing I'm very happy to share is 61% of all the MSMEs that we help today and that we serve in Indonesia mm -hmm. are women. Right. So... We, our job is not done. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just, I would say, in the beginning of this journey. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more to do and, it, and we have to just double down, focus on whether it's diversity, whether it's inclusion or climate change. Uh, we have a lot more to do and uh, we hope to partner and continue doubling down on this mission. Awesome. All right. So since we are in Bali now, I want to discuss about G20 related issues. Yeah. Uh, Indonesia commits to reducing carbon emission by 2030 and the country has recently increased its emission reduction from 29% to 31.89% through its own capabilities and from 41% to 43.2% with international cooperation. So to do so, the government is determined to prioritize a clean energy transition, including accelerating the electric vehicle transition. So my question to you is that, um, what are the concrete actions that can be done by the business sector, including Grab, 
to accelerate the development of uh, sustainable or renewable energy in, in the country. Yeah. yeah, you're exactly right. We're, we're in the beginning of a journey. Mm -hmm. You look at um, today, there is what you call a coal start problem, right? There are not enough vehicles. There's, uh, if there's not enough vehicles, people don't build charging stations or swapping stations, right? And then, but if there's not enough of this, then, uh, then there won't be enough vehicles because right. they said it's too inconvenient and they can't uh, get charged. Right. So what we did was we said, it's okay, let's break that cold start problem with partners, uh, whether it's we partner the Indonesian government, mm -hmm. whether it's partner SOEs like PLN or Pertamina, right. uh, with Gessits, with... Uh, with other companies, we basically invested in 8,500 uh, vehicles. So that gets it going. Mm -hmm. But I think more importantly, it's how we make it possible for even, because it's more expensive. Correct, yeah. So we, because we have Grab Rentals, we basically created a rental program. Mm. And I'll, I'll you know, quickly share, I, I actually, I just met uh, Ibu Yusli. Right. Uh, she's a single mother, two children. During the pandemic, her motorbike got taken away from her. And uh, she had to work as a helper uh, for four homes, right? So really tough morning to night. Because we could create that rental for the electric grab bike, she does between 12 to 15 hours a day. She can do 28 jobs a day. She now makes 5 million rupees a day. She has the flexibility of sending her children to school right. and bringing them home. Mm -hmm. She's so happy. I mean, just now I was talking to her when she was crying, I was crying. It was just a life-changing story. Mm -hmm. So that's the power. If we can help and create and make it more affordable. And she's so smart. She brings two batteries to a house every day and then charges them over five hours is full so that even during the day she's ready so she can work yeah, 12, yeah. 15 hours because right. she's swapping all the time. Right. And that's her ingenuity, that's her hard work and really it's her, right? It's 100% her. All we're doing is just providing it easier for someone who doesn't have capital right. to be able to do this really well and she has embraced it so how do we as an industry mm -hmm. with partners government partners leveraging and partnering with SOEs with our private industry right. help and create millions of Ibu Yusli all oh. across Indonesia all right. yeah 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 Okay, another G20 priority under Indonesia's presidency includes digital transformation and this is your expertise, yeah? Yes. <laughs> digital technology. So, uh, what's your company's role to support the development of um, digital technologies that can bring positive impact on the socio-economic, including in rural areas? Yes. Mm -hmm you really hit the, especially in rural areas, is yeah. actually very tough. Um, mm -hmm. I think number one, you know, think about the concept and the principle of leverage. Mm -hmm. So for example, in many uh, rural areas, mm -hmm. people may only have a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Some may not even have a smartphone, so we created a program to finance a smartphone. Then they have a smartphone. What can they do with the smartphone? With an with a app like Grab Kiosk right. or with Ovo, mm -hmm. they can start earning money. They can start making a small, they can become a UMKM with us. Right. right? They can start really a SME mm -hmm. uh, or MSME. Yeah. Right? So leveraging the smartphone with data, you can do business already from your house. Right. right? Or let's say in other rural areas, they only have a motorbike. Then how do we help that person really leverage that motorbike uh, to become a grab bike driver Correct. and yeah. earn income? Mm -hmm. Or I, I'll think about another, recently I went to visit in Jakarta, one of the Pasar Tradisional. Mm -hmm. And Ibu Siska, I remember, I went to visit her. During the pandemic, her little stall, right, about this size, mm -hmm. you know, it was so hard because people couldn't, you know, there was lockdown, there was quarantine, it right. was such a tough life for so many people, including her. But she embraced Grab Mart. She used 
Grammart, she used our marketing advertising tools to get customers. Today, 90% of her sales are online. Grabmart and our Grab merchant helps her make 15,000 US dollars a month. Wow. <laughs> and we have, we've helped many, many thousands of these wet market merchants, Pasar right. Traditional, right. all across Indonesia. Uh -huh. So I think how do we continue to leverage these tools, whether it's a smartphone, whether it's Grab bike, whether it's a motorbike, whether it's you know a little stall, right. and use our technology to do business, to help and alleviate mm -hmm. and uplift all these UMKM or MSMEs across Indonesia. Right, Anthony, I just I'm just wondering. Um, you met Ibu Siska, you met Chahio directly, and eh? you came to them. So I want to know what's their reaction when the big boss, you know, came to their house and then asked questions, this and that. I just want to know what's their reaction. Well, just now, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you the, the most recent one, which right. was just today, just meeting two ladies, two single mothers, Ibu Yusli inclusive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's extremely heartwarming. They, they you know, they, they keep thanking me and I keep thanking them mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it is probably the most motivating. I, I literally told this to my team just now. I said, you know, I don't care who I meet at B20, I don't care what happens, but just meeting these two ladies mm -hmm. has made my trip already. Wow. It has made me so excited to do what we do and my team mm -hmm. are all highly motivated because of hearing the actual impact right. in their lives mm -hmm. in their children's lives right. because of what grab has done for them wow. that is probably the most single biggest motivational source uh, for me so uh, they keep they keep saying sangat terima kasih right. you know but i keep thanking them because right. they are my soul. I'm actually uh, benefiting because they have become my biggest source of motivation. Wow. Okay, since I'm talking with a yes. leader, a prominent business leader now, mm. so I want to talk about projection, about yes. targets, yeah? Yes. Um, I'd like to know your views on target and projection yes. with a global recession possible next yes. year, yeah? Uh, how are you preparing your business and then also how will you help your driver and merchant partners yeah, be ready for it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think first of all, uh, you know, I'm not prominent business leader. I, I, well, I, 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 I try to think about <laughs> our role, uh, you know, uh, my raison d'etre or my calling is to be a servant leader and to serve Southeast Asia. Uh, and Grab is just one platform to continue serving. When a time when there's inflation, when there's recession fears, people become, have a even tighter with their money, right? In fact, I want to ask all companies to really think the opportunity is there's a huge group of people at the bottom of the pyramid that is underserved, that usually are forgotten because they're not profitable to serve. But if we can invent and create new ways to serve them, you can actually make economic profit right. and create new opportunities mm -hmm. and serve a new rising consumer class. And the better they do, the better society does, the better for your business. Right. Right? So I think number one, how did we do it? So we think about, for example, we launched uh, something called Minder, which is a minimum delivery fee, right? Oh, okay. How do we, we do that so that it becomes more affordable for people to order, Correct. grab food, right? Um, we think of ways of how do we use technology to minimize the driver waiting time at our merchant partners. Because, right. you know, if they wait there for a long time, they get upset, the, the merchant partner, the restaurant gets upset with them. So we try to find ways to minimize their waiting time. Because that waiting time, if used wisely, they can earn even more income by delivering more food or by delivering more people, mm -hmm. right? So we really use technology, whether it's our mapping technology, whether it's our fulfillment and dispatch technology, to help them become more productive by saving them their time. Mm -hmm. So their driver earnings 
continue. We drive prices to make it more affordable during this difficult time. So I think that is the mental model we all as leaders need to take if you want to really go in hand in hand and not just survive but thrive through this global headwinds. Right, right. Okay. And in relation to that, how do you strike a balance between um, serving your purpose and then gaining profit? I think first of all, purpose and profit are not mutually exclusive. Um, you know, one thing I've been very blessed with is because we started a company that was so founded on purpose, that we are a purpose-driven company, we've actually been able to attract some incredible talent, right? And whether it's in Indonesia, globally, because I'm sure you know this, many in the youth today, they don't want to just work for money anymore. Mm -hmm. They want to work for something that they truly believe in. Can they get behind the cause or not? Right. And when people can get behind the cause, they fight. They really fight right. because they believe in that cause. So actually, because of that purpose, we've been able to attract missionaries, not mercenaries. And that has actually driven the company to the next level of invention, the next level of innovation. And it's actually much more sustainable that way. Right. right? Number two, you know, I remember talking to one of the fathers of venture capital globally mm -hmm. just, just a few days ago, actually just two days ago. And he said one thing, he said, look, you know, the realities of the world is you look at the news the past two weeks in crypto and all that's happened. And he said, you know, Anthony, entrepreneurs around the world, business leaders around the world must remember that a legal code, that means meeting the legal bar in itself is insufficient. Right. We need to meet the moral code, the moral bar. Mm -hmm. And that actually, in his, you know, he's, he's a senior guy, very experienced. And he said, over the many decades of investing, he's seen the best business leaders, the best entrepreneurs actually who live by a, a high moral code actually have a much more sustainable business over the long run. So purpose and profit can actually live side by side for the long run. All right, okay. Well, Anthony, I don't want to end this discussion without asking you a question on some solution. So um, how can governments in this region and the private sector can work together to promote innovation and drive growth amid the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think number one is, if businesses think they, they can do things themselves, mm -hmm. I think it will be very tough, if not sometimes impossible. In fact, Grab has taken the opposite approach, which is of partnering, mm -hmm. of leveraging and standing on the shoulders of giants. So one giant I would say is the Indonesian government. Today we partnered the Indonesian government, in fact it's called the Ministry of Cooperatives, right. to help us bring on thousands and thousands of OMKM, mm -hmm. of MSMEs. Right. Right. They helped us reduce the friction to onboard many of these merchants, especially during COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. That is the power of partnership. And working in governments to reduce friction for the, the, the masses, the, the UMGAMs, the MSMEs, which is the backbone of Indonesia or the backbone of Southeast Asian economies. So how can we help them rise? I think that's number one. Really partner to reduce all the friction. Mm -hmm. I think number two is, you know, I think about, for example, the EV problem. The EV problem has a cold start problem, right? Because the, if there are not enough EVs, people are worried about uh, that they won't build the charging stations for it. Right. Or, 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 or the other way around, if there's too many, or if there is uh, too few charging stations, don't, nobody wants to buy EVs. So I think the governments and us, and you know, whether it's PLN, Pertamina, mm -hmm. you know, VR, Gassets, all can partner on how to solve these big societal problems together. Mm -hmm. 
by collaborating, by using uh, dialogue and fostering dialogue like at B20 to come together and say, hey, these are the problems that need to be solved. How can we solve them? And we can totally find a way, maybe not totally today, but at least start the journey of the steps of how to build a large EV fleet, how to solve this coal start problem by investing upfront with the EV charging network to really uh, move forward. And I think the third, I would say, is creating sandboxes. So sometimes governments are afraid, hey, what if, example, the EV experiment doesn't work? It's okay, create a small sandbox, whether it's in Bali, wherever it may be. But the goal is if you create a sandbox, it limits the downside. In the worst case, it's just a failure in a sandbox. But if it's successful, this sandbox is successful, this experiment is successful, then after you can scale it across Indonesia, across Southeast Asia, across the world. So by co-creating with private companies like us, with technology enablers like us, governments can create sandboxes that we together can solve these big problems. All right, great. Once again, Anthony Tan, thank you for joining me in this program. Thank, thank you. you for your valuable no, views. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you for your company's contribution in the, in the development of Indonesia. And also, um, last but not least, I hope you will have a fruitful discussion during the B20 summit. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, you will be one of the speakers. That's yeah. right, on Monday. Very excited for it, actually. Wow, okay. All the best and have a nice one. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.